Please help me share this opinion letter and drop a comment. Somehow we all have to stick together. Dear Congress, I don't have millions to fill your pockets with or a yacht to wine and dine you on. I can't compete with the gold-plated lobbyists in Brooks Brothers suits who have your attention in Washington. Unlike them, though, I represent 30% of the American population that lives below the poverty line and works tiring, low-paying, thankless jobs with no hope for a future. So perhaps you could give us your ear. You can drop by my weekly motel in Lexington, Kentucky for some ramen and a bottle of water or just shoot me an email with your thoughts. Enough of making the billionaires richer and more powerful. You are destroying hardworking Americans and citizens worldwide whose jobs you govern with your votes and legislation. I posted a TikTok video on Saturday morning about the abusive day I had at work on Friday in a small locally owned restaurant. I asked people to share their experiences about their abusive employers. The horror stories just keep coming. I worked for Amazon, FedEx, and others after COVID ate my entertainment career in Las Vegas in March of 2020, so I know their stories are real. This is America where workers should have rights. Many have told me to call the labor board. Many told me to just quit. That is not an option since I was informed on Sunday morning that I was no longer employed. It wasn't an option anyway, as I had only moved my teen and I out of our car and into a weekly motel two weeks earlier. Homelessness is harder than an abusive employer, but frankly, I can't handle either. I'm 65, highly intelligent, physically fit, but I'm not a farm animal. Incest, domestic violence, and COVID contributed to my being so unstable at this age. And I have taken on the task of speaking for those less capable than I am. So here I am, teetering on homelessness again, crying inside from the stories of my fellow earthlings being abused, undervalued, and underpaid every day worldwide. I grew up with a top executive at Texaco in Westchester, New York. Although he was an abusive husband and sexually abusive father, he ran his departments at Texaco with integrity, or so it's, <clears throat> excuse me, so it seemed. Once as head of labor relations, he spent six weeks training to get a trucking license to drive the first tanker through the picket lines. He told me to never ask someone to do something you wouldn't do yourself. He felt that was a core issue for a good leader. But did he care about those strikers who were demanding a better, more humane deal from their employer? Apparently not. His loyalty was to Texaco. Translation, his loyalty was to the stockholders, not the workers. That was 60 years ago. Corporations and their shareholders have turned into vicious overlords since then, if they weren't already back then. At Amazon, I was forced to work mandatory 10 and 11 hour days. The work was physically grueling and my pain doctor told Amazon it was going to destroy my wrists. Additionally, it was not possible to move any faster than I did as a picker at age 62, even as fit as I am from years of teaching martial arts. Pickers a fascinating choice of job titles, wouldn't you say? Every day some young punk would come up to me to talk about my numbers. What fucking numbers, I would bark. I'm giving 100% of what I have to give. You can't get better numbers than that. Had that team of managers jumped in and done some actual work, the numbers would have been better. Jeff Bezos' numbers were in the tens of billions while I slept in my car, exhausted to the bone, in the parking lot of Amazon's million-square-foot plantation in Troutdale, Oregon. What I am asking is that you, as our representatives, go to TikTok, where regular folks share their views and engage in conversations and protests. Right here. Just look at what people are saying and read the stories on the video I posted. I also have dozens of videos about homelessness and the struggle to get employed. I was scared to risk my job to expose my employer's bad behaviors, but watching the women of Iran risk their lives in a quest for freedom inspired me to do so. We are at a breaking point as a global population. This is not a civil war between MAGAs and liberals. It is a class war between the super rich and the desperately poor. The wealthy and the middle class are becoming terrorized by it now. The super rich are still surviving nicely in their highly protected bubbles, but perhaps not for long. I fled Portland, Oregon because the homeless situation I was trying to impact there was eating the city of my ability to thrive. 
I had some wealthy acquaintances there who were scared as they watched the poor setting up camp in their neighborhoods and destroying small businesses with their stench, mental illness, and panhandling. I stopped in Nashville for a few weeks thinking I might fit into the music scene there. I didn't. But I fled there too when I found out that homelessness is a felony in Tennessee and Nashville is particularly vicious to its homeless citizens. I have landed in Lexington, Kentucky. It is also a felony to be homeless in Kentucky, but Lexington seems to be dealing with it in a much more loving way. I hope I am right. Other than the job I just got booted out of, I found the people here quite loving. I can see that old Mitch has funneled a lot of money into this state and it seems to be faring okay. The cost of housing here is the best I've experienced so far. You need to tax the corporations and the super rich. You also need to tax the churches if they aren't going to open their tax-free doors and properties to the poor. You must bring back the regulatory agencies that help workers have a voice and a legal shot at a fair and humane workplace. And most of all, you have to stop loading your bank accounts with money from entities that expect you to vote for the continued financial rape of their employees. Our power as poor, underrepresented citizens and workers is our votes and our few consumer dollars. But if we get any more desperate, the situation is going to turn into a bloody war that no one wins. Do the right thing, or soon we will be at your door and we have nothing to lose. Have some ramen for dinner and give it some serious thought, please, Congress. And by the way, I recommend the chicken plate. Thank you for listening. Please share this video. Please drop a comment about your job. We have to get together. We have to have a single voice. I love you, TikTok.